Hello everyone, and welcome to an A Look Back at series special, a look back at the locomotives that I've missed. This video was suggested by many people, and now I've finally gotten around to making it. You guys have let me know about the locomotives that I've missed or overlooked in previous videos, so in this video, I intend to go over each and every locomotive that you guys have mentioned to me in the comment section below. Before we get into the video, I'd like to make an important announcement regarding this series. Due to the abundance of suggestions that you guys have given me in the time between videos, I am no longer able to take your suggestions, at least for right now. While I will no longer be taking your suggestions for a while, I would like to announce upcoming videos in this series using your suggestions. After the release of this video, you can expect to see in this series a look back at Atchison, Topeka, and Santa Fe excursion engines, a look back at Nickel Plate Road excursion engines, and a look back at Southern Railway excursion engines. The American one. Sorry, Brits. So, without further ado, let's begin. Our first locomotive is Canadian Pacific 1098. 1098 was built in 1913 by the Montreal Locomotive Works and is a sister to locomotive number 1057 mentioned in my Canadian Pacific Excursion Engines video, which I should note is a 460, not a 260. 1098 was mainly assigned freight duties while in revenue service on the CP system until it was retired in the late 1950s to early 1960s. After its retirement, the locomotive was bought by none other than F. Nelson Blunt for his Steamtown USA collection in Bellows Falls, Vermont. After several years of display, the locomotive was bought by the Blue Mountain Reading Railroad and restored to operation, where it ran many excursions throughout the late 1980s and early 1990s until being pulled from service. Today, the locomotive sits on display in Jim Thorpe, Pennsylvania, dressed up as Reading and Northern number 225. Our next locomotive is Southern Pacific number 786. 786 is a 282 Mikado built by the American Locomotive Company in Dunkirk, New York in August of 1916. While in revenue service, number 786 was mainly assigned freight duties on the Southern Pacific Subsidiary Railroad, Houston and Texas Central. After retirement from the Southern Pacific's roster, number 786 was donated to the city of Austin, Texas and placed on display in 1956. After over 30 years on display, the locomotive was leased to the Austin Steam Train Association in 1989 and removed from its display site in 1990. After a very quick restoration, the locomotive was returned to operation in 1991. The locomotive went on to operate on many excursions throughout the state of Texas until it was sidelined in 1999 with unforeseen issues. Initially intended to be a quick repair, this quickly turned into a full-on rebuild of the locomotive. As of today, the locomotive is still undergoing this rebuild in Austin, Texas. Our next pair of locomotives are Canadian Pacific 1238 and 1286. Okay, so I'm gonna pause the video here because, oh my god, it was so hard to find information on these locomotives. This section is not gonna be very detailed at all, because uh, I can only really find one page that had information on these two locomotives. Um, all, the rest were just pictures and didn't really provide much information, so I'm sorry if this doesn't have much detail in it, but this was all I could find. Um, so this is also going to be shorter than the other locomotives, and it might be this way for some other locomotives uh, going throughout the rest of the video, so just be aware of that. Alright, back to the video. This pair of G5 Pacifics were built in the late 1940s by the Canadian Locomotive Company, and in revenue service, much like their sister locomotives, hauled commuters and local freights. After being retired in the late 1950s, the locomotives were sold in 1964 to Rail Tours Incorporated in Pennsylvania. After operating on some double-headed excursions throughout the Pennsylvania area, the locomotives were sold again in August of 1968 to the Red Clay Valley Railroad in Wilmington, Delaware. After five years of operating there, the locomotives were sold yet again to the Allegheny Central Railway in 1973. Once more, these locomotives were sold to the Virginia Central Railroad in Charlottesville, Virginia, and in 2015, they were sold for the final time to the Prairie Dog Central Railroad in Canada. Today, the locomotives remain in the Prairie Dog Central Railroad, awaiting a presumed restoration to operation. As an additional note, I believe these are the only Canadian Pacific 462s that haven't gone to Steamtown. Our next locomotive is Canadian National No. 91. Number 91 is a 260 built in 1910 by the Canadian Locomotive Company for the Grand Trunk Railway. Initially numbered as 1013, the locomotive was renumbered in 1919 to 915. The locomotive was acquired by the Canadian National Railway in 1923, and in October of 1951 was renumbered to 91. 
After being retired in 1959, the locomotive went through a series of private owners throughout the 1960s and 1970s. The locomotive was then bought in 1984 by the Middletown and Hummelstown Railroad in Pennsylvania. The locomotive was restored to operation in the late 1980s to pull tourist trains along the railroad. As of today, the locomotive is awaiting a rebuild at the Middletown and Hummelstown Railroad and has not operated in several years. Our next locomotive is Canadian Pacific number 972. 972 was built for the Canadian Pacific Railway in September of 1912 by the Montreal Locomotive Works and is a 460 10-wheeler. After retirement in the late 1950s, the locomotive was sold to Rail Tours Incorporated, much like 1286 and 1238 mentioned earlier. From the late 1960s to some time between the late 80s and the early 90s, the locomotive ran excursions out of Jim Thorpe, Pennsylvania on Reading, Blue Mountain, and Northern trackage. After being pulled from service, the locomotive was sold to the Strasbourg Railroad in the early 2000s for restoration. Unfortunately, the restoration never came to be, and the locomotive currently sits in pieces outside the railroad's shop complex in Strasbourg, Pennsylvania. Our next locomotive is Southern Pacific number 3420. 3420 is a 280 consolidation built in the early 1900s by the Baldwin Locomotive Works for the El Paso and Southwestern Railroad, originally numbered as 171. The locomotive was leased to the Southern Pacific in November of 1924, and by 1955 was outright bought by the Southern Pacific through a merger. By this point, however, the locomotive's days in useful service had passed and was retired in 1956 and given to the city of El Paso, Texas. The locomotive sat on display until 1980 when it was given to the El Paso Historic Railroad Board for restoration. After one year of restoration, the locomotive steamed again at El Paso's Four Centuries Celebration in 1981. The locomotive even double-headed with Southern Pacific number 4449 during its time in excursion service. Today, the locomotive sits out of service. If it ever wants to operate again, it requires a boiler recertification. Our next locomotive is Southern Pacific number 2248. 2248 is a 460 built by Cook in 1896 and it was originally numbered as locomotive 1829. The locomotive operated on Southern Pacific until it was leased to the Pacific Fruit Express Company in 1945 and retired in 1959 when the flues expired. After being sold for scrap in 1961, the locomotive was purchased by C.T. Brown for use on his tourist trains which ultimately never came to fruition. The locomotive was then purchased by the Texas State Railroad in 1974 and restored as Texas State Railroad No. 200. From 1976 to 1981, the locomotive would operate on the Texas State Railroad until being pulled from service. The locomotive was then purchased in 1990 by the Fort Worth and Western Railroad for operation there. The locomotive operated on the Fort Worth and Western until being pulled from service in 1999 once again due to major boiler work being required on the locomotive. The locomotive was restored to operation in 2001 and sold to the Grapevine Vintage Railroad in 2004, where it continues to operate today. Our next locomotive is Southern Pacific number 4274. 4274 is a 4882 cab forward locomotive built by the Baldwin Locomotive Works in 1943. In revenue service, the cab forwards were mainly assigned to heavy freight trains over Donner Pass and also saw occasional use as helper locomotives on passenger trains. After its days in revenue service were up, 4274 was stored as serviceable in Sacramento in 1956. After making some quick repairs to the locomotive, 4274 was fired up once again to head up a farewell to steam excursion over Donner Pass. The trip went off without a hitch, but unfortunately, it wasn't enough to save 4274. After deadheading to Sacramento the day after the excursion, the locomotive was cut up for scrap. Our next locomotive is Southern Pacific number 1233. 1233 is an 060 switch engine built by the Baldwin Locomotive Works in July of 1918. In revenue service, the locomotive switched cars and yards all throughout the Bay Area until it was retired in March of 1956. In 1957, the locomotive was pulled from the deadlines and placed on display in the Yolo County Fairgrounds. In the early 1980s, the Sacramento Valley Historical Railways, at that time known as the Friends of the 1233, obtained ownership of the locomotive and began work to restore the locomotive to operating condition. In 1989, the work was completed and 1233 was under steam once again. The majority of its excursion career was spent pulling trains on the Yolo Short Line Railroad in Northern California. During Sacramento Railfare 99, the locomotive was used to pull special photo trains along the Yolo Short Line. The locomotive was pulled from excursion service in the early 2000s and today sits on display in Woodland, California. Well, that does it for most of the locomotives that I've missed that you guys have brought up to me. However, there are still a couple that I need to mention. This isn't the first time this has happened, and it certainly won't be the last, so that's why I'm going to call this segment 
Oddball Locomotives. The first of these locomotives that was brought to my intention was Southern Pacific No. 794. Now, it hasn't operated an excursion service yet, so there isn't much history to it, but I still figured I'd mention it here. The second of these locomotives that was mentioned to me was Grand Trunk Western 6039, and in doing research on the locomotive, it did not ever operate an excursion service. It's been considered several times, however, the fact that its cylinders are in bad condition keep it from being operated ever again. And that's going to do it for a look back at locomotives I've missed. I'd like to thank you all for your continued support of this series through your criticisms or corrections on information that I might have messed up on. Since something like this is most likely going to happen again, I've decided to do a video like this every four or five episodes in the series. If you have any constructive criticisms, or if I still missed a locomotive, let me know in the comment section below. That's going to do it for this video. Thank you for watching. Look back at locomotives that I've missed.